Alright, so I am Jamie Massey and this is my video on the enzyme cytochrome B5 reductase, which is abbreviated C5BR. Now, C5BR is a multifunctional protein involved in several different biochemical reactions. In plant, it's found as a membrane-bound protein, which plays a role in microsomal electron transport and hormone anabolism. Its structure and mechanism are unknown because it's not yet successfully been crystallized. In mammals, it exists as a soluble bloodborne protein, which plays a key role in the pathway which reduces methoglobin to hemoglobin. It has been crystallized, so its structure and mechanism are known, and so it is also going to be the focus of this video. Now, methoglobin is a hemoglobin molecule in which the iron 2 and 1 heme group has been oxidized to iron 3. This causes a conformational change in the remaining heme groups, resulting in a stronger affinity for oxygen, preventing O2 dissociation. Typically, in healthy adults, uh, less than 1% of hemoglobin exists as methoglobin, so it's not really an issue, but certain congenital defects or uh, drugs such as nitroglycerin or local anesthetics can in increase the amount of methoglobin in your system to a dangerous level, which results in mild to severe hypoxia. So, the pathway which C5BR is involved in essentially just adds an electron to the ferric heme found in methoglobin in order to make it a ferrous heme typical in hemoglobin. To do this actually takes quite a few moving parts. Uh, NADH, FAD, and cytochrome B5 all have to bind to cytochrome B5 reductase at the same time so that a electron can flow from NADH through C5BR into FAD and then into cytochrome B5. Once all this has happened, cytochrome B5 has been reduced and it is free to go on and transfer that same electron onto methoglobin, creating functional hemoglobin. So all of this electron transfer occurs spontaneously through the thermodynamic law of energy levels. So in order to understand the mechanism, all we have to do is understand the binding of these molecules. In order to make things a little bit simpler on everyone involved, we're going to look at each binding individually, even though several of these occur at the same time. But first, we're going to look at cytochrome B5 on its own. Here it is. On the left, we have the FAD binding site, it consists of five antiparallel beta strands, then one alpha helix, and a six beta strand. This flows into, on the right, the NADH binding site, which consists of five beta strands and four alpha helices in an alternating pattern. So, without further ado, we're going to look at the actual bindings. First off, we have uh, NADH bound to cytochrome B5. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make it easier on us. It We see that it is bound, it is actually bound to the glycines 181 and 183 and this occurs through hydrophobic interactions. Next we see FAD bound to uh, the FAD binding domain. This is bound to threonine 185 through two different hydrogen bonds. Now, interestingly, there is no published structure of cytochrome B5 bound to cytochrome B5 reductase. However, it is known that the lysines at position 42, 126, 163, and 164 of cytochrome B5 reductase interact with the carboxyl groups of glutamic acids 47, 48, 52, and 60, as well as aspartic acid 64 in cytochrome B5. So this is a fairly strong binding. Um, once all these molecules we just discussed have bound together, the electron will spontaneously flow again from NADH through cytochrome B5 reductase into FAD and then into cytochrome B5. Cytochrome B5 will then be reduced at which, at which point it will be free to flow into methoglobin. 
here we do see a complex with a methylbromine heme group. Uh, there's a better picture right here for us. We see that it actually surrounds the heme group. And again, the electron simply deposits itself in the ferric hydrogen, reducing it into um, iron 2, creating a functional hemoglobin molecule. Here are my works cited. Thank you very much for your time.